The hysterectomy is one of the most common gynecologic procedures done in women. Today we're going to talk about the total laparoscopic hysterectomy. The reason we do hysterectomies is to treat abnormal bleeding, pelvic pain, endometriosis, pelvic tumors, and also gynecologic cancers such as ovarian cancer, cervical cancer, endometrial cancer. And today we're going to talk about one type of hysterectomy called the total laparoscopic hysterectomy. If that sounds good to you, continue watching. Well, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Dr. DuPont. I'm a board certified gynecologic oncologist. And today we're going to talk about the total laparoscopic hysterectomy. There are other types of hysterectomy, such as total abdominal hysterectomy and total vaginal hysterectomy. But the total laparoscopic hysterectomy is one of the most common hysterectomies that we do. Some people know it as the robotic hysterectomy, but robotic hysterectomy is actually just one type of laparoscopic hysterectomy. So when we're talking about hysterectomy, we're talking about removing the uterus and typically the cervix. If we just remove the uterine fundus, usually that's called the super cervical hysterectomy. It's not as common as it has been in the past. And there's you know certain reasons why we leave the cervix. Most of the time, a G1 oncologist will try to remove the uterus and the cervix. But just so you know, when we're doing a hysterectomy, we're typically removing the uterus and the cervix. Now, whether we remove the tubes or ovaries are separate, and that'll depend on the reason why you're having the hysterectomy and if there's anything wrong with the ovaries or tubes, such as a, you know, ovarian cyst or tumor or cancer, endometriosis, your doctor will talk to you about whether or not the ovaries or tubes need to be removed. But whether we leave the ovaries or tubes or keep them, that doesn't change the fact that if we remove the uterus and cervix, that's a hysterectomy, and usually we'll say total hysterectomy. So when we're thinking about a hysterectomy, you know, your doctor will decide what route is best for you. So I do have videos that on this channel about treatment of gynecologic cancers, the total abdominal hysterectomy, and the total vaginal hysterectomy. So please check those videos out if you haven't. And if you haven't liked or subscribed, please do that as well. Well, when you're having a hysterectomy, the first thing your doctor will probably do, depending on your age and your health status, is talk to you about one, the reason of the hysterectomy, and then determine if you need any medical clearance or cardiac clearance. You know, sometimes when my patients are older, a lot of times they have multiple health issues such as, you know, diabetes or high blood pressure. I likely get cardiac clearance just because we do know the stress of surgery put patients at risk for a heart attack. So that's kind of one of the big things that we want to make sure that the patient has been evaluated so we can reduce the risk of that happening after surgery. Once you have you know, talked to your doctor or the medical team about the reason for your surgery, you've gotten your medical clearance if you need it, you've gotten your blood work if you need it, then the doctor will schedule you for surgery. Typically, these hysterectomies are done at either a surgery center or a hospital. Patients go home either the same day or the next day, and so that's one of the nice benefits of these types of hysterectomies. Now, when we're thinking about a total laparoscopic hysterectomy, that's just a minimally invasive way to do hysterectomy. You know, patients recover faster, smaller incisions, and they're back to their normal activities faster. One tool that we use to do the total laparoscopic hysterectomy is through the robot. Right now, we have one robot that's uh, Da Vinci. I think there's some other companies that will be making robot soon, but typically the robot is just a tool to help us do a laparoscopic hysterectomy. The other way is what we call straight sticks, where we have just, we're using a laparoscope and we're using instruments that are kind of straight and they're not bendable. That's another way we can do laparoscopic hysterectomy. Very same technique, it's just the tools are different. I do have a video that I want you to watch next that talks about how we do the robotic hysterectomy. It's from Dr. Lynn Kowalski from the Nevada Surgery and Cancer Care Clinic in Las Vegas, Nevada, and here in the United States. And she's allowed me to use a portion of this video for your education. So I hope you enjoy it. So please look at this short video on how we do the technique.
Well, I hope you enjoy the portion of Dr. Kowalski's video on how we do the robotic surgery. One of the nice things about the robotic surgery is that patients have less pain and they return to work faster. And so we all enjoy doing the robotic hysterectomy just because patients have really good experiences and good outcomes. Now, some of the other advantages of the robotic hysterectomy or the laparoscopic hysterectomy is that patients turn to work faster. They have fewer complications in terms of blood loss, infection, pain. Those are some of the, the benefits. Now, some of the disadvantages of the robotic surgery is that it is more expensive. The tools we use are usually disposable, they're pricey, and so it's a lot more expensive than, let's say, a vaginal hysterectomy. So, you know, sometimes cost is a factor when we're doing these surgeries, and so the robotic platform or laparoscopic platforms are usually more expensive. Now, some of the other things is that you do need to have a doctor that's skilled to do the robotic surgery. If your doctor is not skilled, then we would recommend a different type of hysterectomy. And another disadvantage is the operating room time. If you have a surgeon that's not as skilled, of course, the procedure will take longer. The more your surgeon does, the faster they get. So typically the anesthesia time or the time you're in the hospital, you're in the operating room does decrease as you your surgeon gets more skill with the procedure. Other disadvantages are injury, um, injury to adjacent structures such as the bowel, the bladder, the ureter. Sometimes there'll be thermal injuries that may not be recognized right away because a lot of our instruments have um, cautery. And so sometimes, you know, injuries happen, you know, despite our best efforts to be perfect, sometimes patients will have some complications from thermal injuries. But overall, the robotic platform and the laparoscopic um, technique is, is very well received. Patients love getting back to work faster. Um, and we love it because our patients recover, have fewer complications, or really very well after surgery. I do have some other videos on different types of hysterectomy, and so please watch those videos next. But if you've had a robotic hysterectomy or a laparoscopic hysterectomy and you want to put your comments below, please do. Typically after surgery, your doctor will see you back in one to two weeks to go over the pathology report. And typically they'll also tell you to have pelvic rest for six to 12 weeks. And usually I'll tell my patients not to dry for a couple of weeks. I created a nutrition guide that I give to my patients before surgery, just some things that I want them to do before and after surgery to kind of optimize their health. So I'll put that in the um, link below. It's a free download, so please, I hope it's helpful for you. I do give it to all of my patients and definitely tailor it to your needs because you know everyone's a little bit different, but this is what I give to my patients in my office. But overall, a robotic hysterectomy or the total laparoscopic hysterectomy is just one way we do hysterectomy procedures and patients really do have great outcomes. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, give me a like or subscribe if you haven't already and then watch this video next. Bye-bye.